Hello friends. Hello sir. We have already understood uh, the basics of property plant and equipment in our earlier session. Right? Yes sir. So we have talked about what is property plant and equipment. We have seen how it is same as fixed asset. We have talked about the definition of property plant and equipment. We have seen the recognition criteria. We have also talked about the cost of the asset including subsequent cost. Right? <coughs> we will now understand continuing with the earlier session we will now understand how property plant and equipment is measured subsequent in subsequent years. Okay, so we will continue with our discussion on IAS 16, which is property plant and equipment. Okay, and we will deal with the subsequent measurement. Now, what do you understand by subsequent measurement of property plant and equipment? So, when we bought something in year one, we said that we will measure it at Cost, right? But then we said in the definition of intangible asset, we've, de we've talked about the definition of property plant and equipment, which is it is used for more than one year, more than one period, correct? So, how does it appear in your books in year two, in year three, in year four, etc.? How does it appear in your books? Does it appear at cost or does it appear at some other value? Okay? So, under the Indian context, we know that property plant and equipment or fixed asset for that matter is measured at cost and you apply depreciation to it, correct? So one method is the cost method, which is same as we understand. But we talked about IFRS and we said that IFRS believes in the fair value principle and accordingly under IFRS there is another method which is recommended or which is prescribed and that is known as a revaluation method. Okay. So under the cost method, there is no change. So we know that the fixed asset would be measured at cost less accumulated depreciation. Okay. Let me write it more clearly. Can I have this part? So under the cost method, it is the cost of the asset less accumulated depreciation, correct? We also know that there is something called impairment. So in case there is something, in case there is an impairment loss, that is also decreased. Okay, and we will deal with this later. This is beyond the scope right now. But this is basically this is same as we understand in the Indian context. Let us take an example. Is there anyone here who has who owns a house? You own a house? Yes. You do? Okay. How much did you purchase your house for? 50 lakh rupees. So you bought the house for 50 lakhs. When did you buy the house? The 30 years back. 30 years back. So, 30 years ago. Okay. If you had to sell the house now, what would be the value that you would get? Just an estimate. I know you don't want to sell your house, but then just an estimate. It's double the amount which I bought. At least double the amount. Mm -hmm. So, you would at least get 1 crore rupees for it. Correct? But a house is a building and a building is a depreciable asset. Mm -hmm. If you were recording the house in your books of the accounts under the cost method, you would have a be accumulated depreciation to it. And accordingly, your house would be depreciated after 50 lakhs. Correct? Even if I say that 50 lakhs includes both land and building, and you are saying that land is not depreciable. So let's say this was 25 and this was 25. This would remain as 25, but this would have depreciated it, correct? And accordingly, the value of your house in your books would never be 50 lakhs, correct? Under this model, because this would have depreciated, and if it is 30 years, probably it would have depreciated to zero, correct? But if you want to sell the house today, you would get at least one crore. 
So is your books of accounts under this method showing a true and fair view of your business? It is not. Right? But under IFRS, it talks about fair value principle and accordingly, IFRS allows you a revaluation method which is essentially a fair value method. And remember, either of these methods can be used. So you can either adopt the cost model or you can adopt the revaluation model. Okay? And we'll understand how revaluation model works. It's very simple, but then we'll still see how it works. Can I love this part? Yes. <clears throat> Under the revaluation me method, you would value your cost at fair value. This fair value means you will either appoint a valuer or you would know that okay if you want to sell the value today, sell the asset today, this is the value that you will fetch. Okay? You will still depreciate this. So any accumulated depreciation would still apply. Any impairment would still apply. Okay? And we are not getting into how to determine the fair value because a fair value is something which is how to determine a fair value is not, or the calculation is not prescribed under IFRS, or at least that is not what we are discussing right now. Okay? Any question at all? So, this is a huge difference between. How we account for depreciation or fixed asset in India and how it is accounted for under IFRS. Okay? Any questions? No. Have, having said all this, whenever we apply the revaluation model, right, there are a lot of responsibilities as an accountant. Okay? When we talk about fair value, the asset has to be checked for fair value at regular regular intervals at least annually. So if we are using the revaluation method, we will have to check the fair value of the asset every year. Okay? Uh, before we move on to the calculations of fair uh, of revaluation, please note that we interchangeably use the terms book value, carrying amount or the written down value. So they are the same and we will be using the term carrying amount because it is more commonly used in case of revaluation method. Okay? So let's take an example. We purchased the asset and at the end of the year we have found that the carrying amount of the asset is rupees 100. Okay? This is the current year. Now, year 2 we will do a revaluation when we do the revaluation, we found that the carrying amount of the asset is either increased or decreased from the last year. Now what happens is, if the carrying amount is increased, we will take it to the balance sheet. Okay? Under balance sheet, it is noted in the equity section, that is revaluation reserve. And whenever there is a decrease in the carrying amount, we will take it to the profit and loss account. So if the carrying amount is decreased, okay, then in that case, we take it to the profit and loss account. Debit side. Now let's understand why are we doing this in the first place before we move on. Okay. Whenever there is an increase in the value of the asset, it is basically leading to a gain, correct? But at the same time, that is not the realized gain for me. It is not even an unrealized gain for me. So, it does not lead to an increase in profits. Because it does not affect the profits directly, because the business has not earned it, there is just an uh, increase in the value. So, therefore, it does not affect the profitability of the company, but it does change the financial position, right? Because if the business is going to sell the asset today, 
it will get a higher amount. So therefore, it is taken to the balance sheet. However, if there is a decrease in the financial asset, if there is a decrease in the value of the asset, that in effect means that the depreciation that we have charged is actually not correct. It can be perceived in that way, right? And obviously, the principle of conservatism still applies. So in that case, if there is any decrease in the value of the asset, we take it to the profit and loss account, which will in effect decrease my profit. Okay? Now, what happens in case of year 2 or year 3? In the next year, there can be either an increase in the value or a decrease in the value. Correct? But in case of decrease in the value, there can be two scenarios. One is decrease up to the previous amount or it is decrease beyond the previous amount, right? In case there is a further increase, right, the condition remains the same, revaluation reserve, that is balance sheet. In case there is a decrease up to the previous increase, in that case we will reverse what was increased in the revaluation reserve, right. So in this case we will reverse revaluation reserve. But if there is a decrease beyond the previous increase, we will reverse the revaluation reserve up to the amount that was increased and the balance amount is taken to the profit and loss account. Okay? Any question? Are we good so far? Can we take an example here? Let's take a small example. So the year 1 the value was 100, in case it increased to let's say 110, okay, the carrying amount is 110, then in that case the amount that will go into the revaluation reserve would be 10, 110 minus 100, correct? If there is a further increase, if the carrying amount is let's say 120 now, so we will take another 10 rupees in the revaluation reserve. Complication arises here. If there is a decrease up to the previous increase, that is, what is your value in your what is the balance in your revaluation reserve? 20? Correct? Or that is your bearing amount is 120. So if there is a decrease between 110 and 120, right? So let's say if the carrying amount now is 115. So this is where the complexity arises, okay? In case there is a decrease, right, that is the value was 110, if it decreases from here, that is if the carrying amount becomes 105, in that case, what will I have to do? I will have to reverse what is there in the revaluation surplus. So there will be a minus 5 in the revaluation surplus, okay? But what happens if there is a decrease beyond that? So let's say if the carrying amount here comes down to 95, okay, that is goes beyond this amount. In that case, I will have to reverse this entire 20, okay, there was this balance of 10 plus 10, 20 here, plus I will have to take further 5 in the profit and loss account. Under IFRS, there is a very important concept which is different from what we practice in Indian context. Okay, so let's say if you buy a car, okay, what are some of the most important components of a car? Engine, engine, gear, gear, gear battery, seat, steering, right, silencer maybe. There can be so many things which are very very important components of the car. If that component is not present the car cannot run 
A car cannot run without a battery or an engine. So let's take these two specific examples. But then when you go and buy a car, do you know what is the value of the battery? No, not sure. You don't get to know that. Do you know what is the value of the engine? You don't get to know that. If you bought an I-10, if it is worth 5 lakh rupees, you've paid 5 lakh rupees and you know that this is the value of the asset. Okay? Under IFRS, there is a very important concept which says that the fixed asset or the property plant and equipment should be componentized. What does that mean? It means that important components of the asset, if they are important, if they can be identified separately, it should be separately identified and recorded as assets. Okay? Now there is a lot of judgment which is applied in this case and we are not going into too much details around it. But just know for the time being that there is a componentization approach which is required to be followed under IFRS. Okay? <coughs> this is also applied in case of replacement. So let's say if I have bought a car and under the car there are I have divided into three components. One is the engine, one is the battery and the car itself. Okay? Now, if I have to replace the battery of the car in year three, in that case, there would be a carrying amount of the battery. Okay? So the carrying amount of the battery will be de-recognized and the cost of the new battery will be added to the cost. Okay? So just as a concept, we are not discussing numericals for the time being, but understand that under IFRS there is a componentization approach which is required to be followed and in case of replacement of the part of the asset, the carrying amount of the asset or the part which is replaced is de-recognized and the cost of the replacement is added to the cost of the asset. Okay? Any questions? No? We now move on to the last part of the session, which is depreciation. Okay? Under depreciation, there is not much difference as compared to what we follow in Indian context. That is, there are what are the key components of depreciation? If you have to calculate depreciation, what are some of the key components which are required? Cost. Cost of the asset. Scrap value. So we, we require the cost, we require scrap value. What else? Life of the asset. We require the useful life of the asset. What else? Percentage. We may require the rate of depreciation in case. <coughs> there is any change, right? In case we are using the written down value method, for example. Now, please understand that when we talk about the Indian context, there are two cases that we follow. Okay? If there is a change in the estimate, or if there is a change in the method. So yeah, the other part is the method of depreciation. Correct? In case of the Indian context, what happens is, in case there is a change in the method of depreciation, we apply the method retrospectively. Right? But please note that under IFRS, all of these are considered to be estimates and any change in the depreciation method or rate or useful life is regarded as a change in the estimate and accordingly, it is implemented prospectively. Okay? We all know very clearly that any depreciation amount is charged to the profit and loss account. P &L account right? It is charges. It reduces the profit and it reduces the value of the asset. Okay? Any questions? Can we do a very quick recap? So we have talked about the revaluation method. We have talked about the cost method. So these are the two models which can be followed in case of recording an asset. That is subsequent measurement. In case of revaluation method, it is important that the fair value of the asset must be identified every year and accordingly <coughs> we will need to adjust the profit and loss amount or the revaluation reserve. Okay? In case of depreciation, we can follow any method of depreciation but any change in the any change in the rate of the useful life or the estimate or the method is considered to be a change in estimate and accordingly under IFRS it is affected prospectively. Whereas in case of Indian context, if there is a change in the depreciation method, it is recorded retrospectively. Okay? Any questions? Thank you.